What's up everybody, welcome to episode 13 of Let's Play Pathfinder Kingmaker. I just want to give a quick shout out to Aunt Tony here, who explains about why Octavia prefers Acid Splash. And he says her AI is already calculating expected damage per round including target AC. A ranged touch attack is almost literally unbeatable if she has sneak attack die because it targets touch AC and is therefore almost guaranteed to always hit the target. Put down that ridiculous bow nonsense. Leave that for Ecom. Um, and also, there is a way to uh, stop her from doing that, and that is to auto-set her to charge, and then she'll just use her main weapons and she can't charge with a bow. Alright, to, on to the episode. Alright, we are here episode 14 just wanted to start with that introduction bringing some OJ here alright so in the last episode we started clearing out the stag lords fortress and in this episode we're going to attempt to continue to do that don't hesitate here I am but the alarm has been rung. To victory! I'm gonna see if we can't come back over here. Use these horses to our advantage. Run. Ugh, there's so many of them. Run. Okay, stop using telekinetic fist now. Not good. All right. Solid plan. Tear them apart. Unworthy. I don't think I can rest again, so. There's a sneak attack. Go get them. Get them, we can do this. Nice. Boom, son. That is a pretty good start overall to the episode. Chocolate. Alright, so our gear is slowly getting better. We're going to need all the gold we can get. But what I'm afraid of... Oh, we didn't rest? How many camping rations do we have? Four. Oh no. Our duty calls. Well, we're gonna have to go off to the main map and rest. I thought I rested. Huh. Akiros. Here 
as a bandit. I've been taught. Would you like when some? You, you either pray or polish your armor. It is why my armor gleams as it does. What a golem! Oh. Well, you're in trouble, sir. Therese's the attack is only a plus five. When he hits those sneak attacks, it's pretty sweet. And I'm realizing how poorly I built him already. It's pretty funny. Kiros. I think I'll wait for the festivities to begin. I'll be around when the stag lord appears. Owl bear. The caged owl bear seems to be worried. He growls softly as you approach. It looks strong enough to break the cage's door. Hmm. Well. She has no heroism. Sorry, Stag Lord, you're just gonna have to wait a minute. You too, Cressel. Where did Cressel go? There they are. Shouldn't have used so many rations so early. I'm gonna do some hunting. Let the Stag Lord drink his brew. While we rest outside. You didn't do it this way, you're pretty much dead. But the first time through, I didn't know a whole lot about the game, so maybe. It's easier now. Um, you keep cooking, you help with the hunt. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now, I believe it is time to fight the Stag Lord. Or at least, should I say, attempt number one fight the Stag Lord. In a horrible storm yet. This could be played to our advantage. Hope Kressel and crew, yep, they didn't get too anxious and leave. Out of them. I'll go ahead. So it begins. Start with some heroism. Now, 
That's 10 minutes per level, so we have plenty of time. Whoa, don't hit the owl bear. She's going to inspire competence. Going to try to calm the owl bear. Succeeded at lore nature check. The owl bear seems to have endured some sort of abuse recently, probably at the hands of a certain druid. It's scared, angry, and wants to take a re revenge on its offenders. It seems to understand that you're not one of them, and it probably won't attack you. Step away from the cage. The owl bear, owl bear will help us fighting the stag lord. So now, the fun begins. The road awaits. Speak. One minute. Well, to victory. Let's get this going. I was just about dead. But we got some backup here. Not bad. Rage with a Mary. Drink a bark skin. Uh, you reduce a person. Jay falls down. Learn from my mistake. Oh, Therius is down. Valerie is down. Kill him. Survive. I always survive. Telekinetic fist him. Oh, nice. You attack the stag lord. Oh, we're getting him. We're getting him. Oh no. Oh, we almost had him. We almost had him. He's gonna die here. Me. Please. This is where I step Dang. We almost had him. And I was singing the wrong bard song. Singing yet. Alright. 
adventures call to them. Share your will. Bless us. Last up, let's have her sing. Excellent. Use your luck and merry rage a bit. Have a moderate cure wounds. No, I give that to a Mary. Critical wound. Oh, we gotta get him. Uh oh. Potion of haste bell failed. Nice. down from a terrible critical hit we're in trouble we're in trouble oh. I thought the owl bear was going to help us Are you going to help us? Sir, you need to rage. Plus one sacred. All attack. our crew. Alright. Well, let's have her cast. Nice 
nicely done. Don't worry about those bandits down there. Who are you? You're not one of my people. Snowball. Um. She's missing with her snowballs to so just attack. This body holds this can't be over. Get him. Get him. Quickly. No! Bandits came from behind. Come on, he's almost dead. These guys are tough. What is Amiri doing down there? Supposed to be protected from evil. These bandits are evil. Octavia can use a call lightning scroll too. I forgot about that.
She can't use that. Skill check. She'll never make the skill check. He might, though. Getting rocks so much. <laughs> she needs to use a bark skin. Give the blur to Valerie. She needs to use the blur. Alchemist is hurting us more than anybody. And this can't be over. I require healing. Alright, now who do we still got? Let's try to bring the group back here. Away from the stag lord. Who is that? Just have Octavia telekinetic fist him. And Lindsay wasn't even singing. I bring a mirror up there. I die free. Why aren't you guys helping us? That would certainly help. Bears bugged. And so they walked on. <sighs> Can you make an epic pose? I need inspiration. the owl bear. Where are you going, sir? Owlsberg is owl bear is gonna die before we even get there. Come on, Owlbear. 
Get in there. Mess him up, man. Oh, we're dead. We're dead. Bandits are gonna be coming from down there. This body holds no more. Ah, humbug. Ooh. Don't panic. Can't grace on Lindsay. No. Oh my gosh. Nice if the owl bear and stuff worked. You have my attention. Just a free for all now. Where is Akiro's going? Why is that bugged? Gosh! What do we even have left, Valerie? Try putting them in a web, I don't know. It's not gonna work. What do you have in the bag of tricks? Summon a monster up in his face. Come on, Valerie, it's up to you. What else can you do? Give him an ear piercing scream, though I'm sure he has plenty of fortitude. Where's the owl bear? Look, the owl bear is still alive, making his way up. Not 
Nice. Come on. No, this can continue to attack, but drink a potion. I doubt he has a tag of opportunity. <sighs> Sorry, Mary, I'm gonna need that blur potion off ya. Scream in his ear. That'd be great if this call lightning spell worked in a jiffy. Avenge me. Oh no, come on. Come on, he's almost dead. Oh, we got it. It worked. Nice, we did it. Whew. After so long, I learned to stand. I... Oh. The stag lord clutches something resembling a charm in his bloody fingers, seemingly placing the last of his hope into it. You hear a snapping sound, and then a dull sigh bursts from the stag lord's chest. I know of the pain you've endured in your life, but that doesn't excuse the atrocities you committed. Spare your compassion, your judgment. I must oh, wait for I... Bingo. We did it. Somehow, a rapier, unidentified chain shirt from Nizrock. Alex had a great club, a belt, some nuts, a toy knight, a simple wooden toy, one that you often see in the hands of peasant children, polished to a sheen due to the frequent use, and a toy dragon. Cressel died. I don't know if I had studded leather. Man, that was rough. And we didn't even use Staglord's broken charm. A charm once worn by the Staglord, it's smeared with blood. Probably used out of something inside, but it's empty now. Wow. Studded leather. Helmets. Woots. Racers and a cloak. My goodness. So it wasn't the prettiest. That's for sure. We didn't even use all the right things. I had Bless, I used Protection from Evil. I don't even think I had a Miri raging. Uh, she was. I didn't have him using his luck. He dies quickly. And he doesn't have a good attack bonus because of poor strength. I build him kind of poorly. Wow. So tell Oleg the good news. I guess that owlbear killed all these things over here. Yep. Good job, Owlbear. Now let's explore a bit. The place that bandits have chosen for their fortress is possibly the best to start a city. Suitable both for life, trade, and defense. 
at that beautifulness. What was in there? A kukri, unidentified. That bandit cleric was carrying an onion. Alright, so before I deliver the news to Oleg, I want to explore the fort more and even go inside. Hey, little corgi. Yep, battle's over, buddy. That owl bear did some damage. What's that? We're gonna make buku bucks from this trip. Kill us all. Done and done. Excellent. What's in the barrel? Some trout in a barrel? Like catching fish in a barrel. So be right back. Alright, then I'm back. So, we defeated the Stag Lord, making us the new and rightful owners of this land. We have to go back and report to Oleg, and we'll get into that, but. Let us bide our time. Yes, let us bide our time. Don't watch how I defeated that battle if you want to see great tactics. I didn't even use Divine Favor, I don't even think Amiri was raise, raging too much. She's now got a critical wound, but somehow we got a ton. And I was told by a friend um, that you can even take out a character Aux and Dovin, the two generals, uh, if you don't alert the camp and you explore up here in the northeast corner. So that would have made the fight much easier. This requires your attention. Let's head in here. How curious. Indeed. I won't let you down. Tavia, would you do the honors? Hopefully she has enough trickery. You see that? Hmm, speak. Let's just make the extra careful is. here. This is the previous stag lord we're talking about here. Thank you! Empty wine bottles cover the floor. So let's see what he's keeping in the stash here. Silver buckle and some gold. Rusty horseshoe and some gold. Shining scale and some gold. Oh, that one's locked. I did as you asked. Oh, a punching dagger. Some unidentified padded armor. So I'm going to make you guys I'm going to leave it on a cliffhanger at the end of this episode. We're going to identify all the, these items in the next episode. This luxurious bed is untouched. It seems it hasn't been slept in for some time. Done and done. Nicely done. Moonstone. Carved figurine. What do we have here? The Great Debates? Secret Overlords, the essence of the world order, and a bottle of oil. 
We'll read some of these books. That one's empty. Diamond dust. Dust left cutting a diamond. A merchant would pay well can also be used to cast certain spells. So that's important. Prodigal Sons and an old map of Avistan. What a surprise. Some eggs. We're doing cooking now. Request. What a surprise, eh? I wrote it like I saw it. What's the hold up? Hmm, there seems to be someone up there. Who could it be? Who could be in there? Is that Nugra? Oh my gosh, it is. This exit to Fort Backyard looks abandoned. It seems the bandits barely use it. There's also supposedly some way to poison the Stag Lord's wine so he's weaker. I don't really know anything about that though. So Nugra is in here being held captive. By the stag lord. So let's see here. Should I save that for the next episode? Let's open the door. Stranger! Stranger wants my blood! I know! Get in there. A merry rage. Get your justice. You deserved it. Try to stagger him with a snowball. Oh, snowball actually worked. Oh. Wait. We still got him. So Nugra attacked us on sight. The insane father of the stag lord. And he just has an empty chest, but what was on his body? Oh my goodness. Nugra's crumpled note. He calls to her again, his queen. He drinks, he calls to her, he drinks again. I have no idea who she is. I can't even tell if she exists outside his own drunken vision. But I know he'll call to her, and then he'll crash around angrily, yelling that she didn't come. Then he'll come for me. I obey the rules, I do as he says. I keep silent until he allows me to speak. But he still beats me every time he drinks and rages. He said he'll burn my hands in acid next time. Will I still be able to write? I... I don't know why he attacked me on sight though. Hide armor. Alright, so we'll drop a chain shirt again. Boink. Now we're back to medium. Alright, so let's read some of these books here. Let's read Five Years in the Depths of the Forest Revelations of a Disciple of the Teacher of Avalo by Surya the Wolf. Ludrigan. Van der Lapius and Daughters Publishing House. I spent half of my life in a temple of Saren Ray. I served the goddess loyally, not blindly, and blindly, never considering that no one, not even an immortal deity, can walk your path for you. I carried out Saren Ray's will, but never stopped to think about what it was exactly or what lay behind it, the source of the kind goddess's kindness. Then an unknown preacher came to town and challenged the senior priests of all the great temples to debates. Some laughed at him, others defamed him, but many, like me, saw the truth in his words. We followed him into the Arthfell Forest, where he'd meditated for seven years, gaining insights into truth. The teacher opened my eyes to the wise way, the path that the kind God follows, and the common thread that unifies all their teachings and makes them worthy of veneration. Some understand it through the phoenix, and in burning instincts and a fiery will. Others go the way of the unicorn and chameleon, achieving peace and silence. Those who have a powerful voice go the lion's way and preach the wise way to others. I found enlightenment on the way of the wolf, in cutting wood, carrying water, and working without thought of thanks. 
So Avalo was the teacher of Saren Ray and Surya the Wolf. Spent five years in the depths of the forest. Pretty cool. So experience over just serving blindly in a temple. Three prodigal sons. It's done, I said. Milliken studied me with narrowed eyes. You look awfully clean, he said. Where's the knife? In answer, the first shouts went up from the inn. Fire! screamed Ilna, and then other voices joined hers. In an instant, Milliken's entrepreneurial instincts took over, and he sprang for the door, tossing the crossbow aside. Outside, the roof of the inn was already smoking, only oily black against the sunset, flame licking through the thatching in places. With a scream of pain, Milliken ran for the creek. I looked to Fargus. Needing no further cue, we each grabbed up armfuls of supplies and sprinted off in the opposite direction. After ten minutes of leap brambles and duck branches, we stopped to catch our breath. Back the way we'd come, the smoke was still visible, though the sounds had faded to just the faint and frantic pealing of a church bell. That was close, Fargus said, leaning against a tree and breathing hard. Agreed, I puffed, staring down at the clo cloak full of bread that now made up our sole possessions. Then the sound of the bell reminded me of something. About what you said back there, I asked. You said Shaylin. I thought you were a priest of Desna. Fargus grunted. A man's faith is a personal thing, he said, tying up the cloak. Now shut up and keep running. And we did. So they stole bread and burned down an inn. Let's look at the different gods too. Actually, let's look that up now. So, Shaylin. Oh my goodness. How about Desna? Wow. So. He was a priest of Shalin, but he said Desna. So Shalin has watched over the multiverse with a gentle heart and generous eye since the beginnings of sentience, encouraging mortals in peace and love and reveling in even their crudest artistic awakenings. That's right, Valerie was going to be a paladin of Shalin. A passionate and creative artist in both matters of heart and works of beauty, she teaches that true beauty takes many forms, that kindness is its own form of strength, that no force is more powerful than love, and that every person is beautiful in some way. She's experienced enough pain herself to recognize the sting of sacrifice, and has soothed enough broken hearts to know that love and beauty are not easy things. Yet despite the realities of pain and loss, she remains an eternal optimist, helping to mend the deepest pains and turn the coldest hearts toward love and light. No mortal monster is, or deity is immune to her power. We'll just read the first paragraph for now and maybe get into this deeper later. Desna is an impulsive and aloof goddess who delights in freedom, discovery, and mystery. Her aloofness stems not from arrogance, but from confidence in her own abilities and her desire to be unburdened by troubles. She is a collection of contrasts, an ancient goddess who dislikes predicting the future, a traveler who cares nothing for her destination, a carefree creature of instinct haunted by a past stretching back eons, and a peaceful deity forced to battle with old enemies, eternally young despite the weight of ages and stars upon her. All this is cool stuff, man, but I don't know if I'm going to get through all this in this episode. We learned about Calistria and how King Irovedi likes to dress up as a male Calistria. She's the most widely worshipped elven goddess on Galarian, an ancient deity with a long memory for old slights, at once mysterious, alluring, temperamental, and passionate. Although most of her worshippers are elves, she's popular with other races as well, for at some point almost everyone has felt the fire of lust, engaged in trickery, or been driven to revenge. She is not so much a spiritual guide for the elven people as a cornerstone for their culture, 
never pushing them to act but always ready to assist when the time comes for action. The savored sting is a sultry manifestation of everything in elves that is fascinating to other races, attracting men and women alike. Men and women alike with her raw sexual magnetism. Her beauty is typically characterized as sensual, desirable, and arousing, or described in more vulgar terms. Gazing on Callistria's clothed bodies, viewers wonder what she looks like naked. Her nude form drives their curiosity to even more intimate places. Although she considers herself female, Callistria has been known to take on a male form that is attractive enough to make any mortal flushed and weak in the knees. Wow. An Arastal. Also known as Old Dead Eyes, an ancient deity who first became known on Galarian when early humanoids began to domesticate and dominate their natural surroundings. Pastoral legends claim that Old Dead Eye crafted the first bow as a gift to mortals so they might learn to hunt and survive in the dangerous world. Though civilization has continued to advance beyond simple villages, Arastal remains popular in tradition and in the frontiers of the world a transitional figure between the worship of the green faith and the religion of cities. This is some cool stuff. Oh, look at these different domains. Trickery domain? Oh. Death domain, that's... Jathal. You can cause the living to bleed at a touch and find comfort in the presence of the dead. At 8th level, you heal damage instead of taking damage from channeled negative energy. If the channeled negative energy targets undead, you heal hit points just like undead in the area. And isn't someone in the destructive d domain, I think, harem? You revel in ruin and devastation and can deliberately deliver particularly destructive attacks, destructive smite. You gain the destructive smite power of the supernatural ability to make a single melee attack with a morale bonus on damage rolls equal to half your cleric level, minimum one. You must declare the destructive smite before making the attack. You can use the ability a number of times per day, three plus your wisdom modifier. And at eight leather, leather level, you can harem can emit a 30 foot aura of destruction for a number of rounds per day equal to his cleric level. All attacks made against targets in this aura, including you, gain a morale bonus on damage equal to half your cleric level, and all critical threats are automatically confirmed. These rounds do not need to be consecutive. So that's like good and bad, but there's a lot of domains. That is so cool to me. I nerd out majorly with stuff like this. What about... Uh, we heard Gorum. Someone mentioned Gore. <clears throat> Said to have been born from the first battles between human orc and orcs, Gorm appears as a suit of spiked plate armor with blazing red eyes. Though claimed by half orcs, humans, and orcs as one of their own, the god cares nothing for these divisions except insofar as they relate to battle and strife. He believes in strength and power, the verdict of the sword, and the music of clashic iron. He does not favor good or evil, and the only right he confers upon mortals is the right to fight for the next breath. As long as people struggle against themselves and each other, Gorm's teachings live on. The greatest Morim moments in a Gormite's life are those spent locked in close combat with every moment threatening annihilation. All else is dull and dreary. I think uh, Amiri likes Gorm. There was another one, though, that I'm trying to think of. Who is the one? Who is the one that we chopped the tree down of? I guess it wasn't a deity. Vergathoa, Jathal's deity, is an utterly amoral. He hedonistic goddess concerned only with satiating her own desires regardless of the consequences others suffer. 
Like Desna, she strives for her experience and a full appreciation of the world, but her appreciation is utterly selfish. She was once a mortal woman with a tremendous appetite for life, one who rebelled against the notion of being judged by phrasma and losing the joys of living. Somehow in death she found the strength to tear herself from Phrasma's endless line of souls and return to Galarian, becoming a divine being and the world's first undead creature. Her existence is a corruption of the natural order. Some say her first divine footprints upon the soil of the material plane birth plagued and infection, and that the first shadows and wraiths were born of her breath. We could be here all day doing this. There was one more. Grotus is an apocalyptic apocalyptic god of unknown origins, perhaps predating the current incarnation of the planes. Enigmatic and malevolent, he remains infinitely patient in the face of an indefinite vigil to fulfill his mysterious purpose. Because he does not actively, actively cultivate worshippers, much of what is known about him and his faith is limited and contradictory, built from second-hand lore repeated by scattered and mostly insane followers. Most folk pay him no heed or give him only scant consideration for tangible and immediate threats are far more pressing than a god of the death of all things. This doesn't bother Grotus, for he knows the end times will come, whether mortals believe in him or not. So we're definitely going to have to get in here and read, you know, some of this stuff. A bit more. Bestiary. This is kind of interesting. Five types of actions within the framework of the six second combat round. In a normal round you can perform a standard action and a move action, or you can perform a full round action. You can also perform one swift action and one or more free actions. You can always take a move action in place of a standard action. In some situations, such as in a surprise round, you may be limited to taking only a single move action or standard action. Simple enough. Combat round is six seconds. There are ten rounds in a minute of combat. Based, each round has starting combat cooldown based on their initiative check up to six seconds. They start acting after the cooldown in rounds of 6 seconds. When the rules refer to a full round, they usually mean the span of time of a particular initiative count in one round to the same initiative count in the next round. Effects that last a certain number of rounds end just before the same initiative count they began on. Alright, we'll get into more of that later. Let's read... This one's pretty cool. Secret Overlords, the Essence of the World Order. Until recently, we knew this world as it was described in books and stories. Oh, by the way, we'll, uh, to make up for all the reading, if you guys don't like that as much, or if you do, we'll identify all these items when I'm done with these books. A sewer, torn apart by hyenas that separate us with nations and borders, oppress us with extortion and lies, and assert their authority and power. However, someone else's hands, hand rules these slaves who act like masters. It's a threat far more intimidating than a handful of arrogant fools. Our lands are secretly ruled by the most ancient creatures of Galarian, the inhabitants of the ever-dark depths, who know both past and future. People are led along paths they cannot see and do not have the power to leave, to an end known only to, our hit, to the hidden masters. Some insist that the signs are purely coincidental, but they point to a vast conspiracy. Only a fool can fail to see how the myriad coincidences weave into a great cobweb, or they have submitted their very will and sworn their allegiance to our unseen masters in the depths. Interesting. Let's read The Legend of the Pathfinder. The door flung open. The Legend of the Pathfinder by Aaron... Rorarby. The door flung open. The three chaps shared, sharing adventure stories fell silent. Hail, friend, said the visitor in a deep voice. Have you got a room for me, master? The bored half-elf behind the counter peered into the visitor's face and whistled. Blimey, if it isn't Gregus Jeffs. Hail, friend, let me give you a room. Your gold is no good here. 
No, I'll pay for it in full. That's what the society is for, helping and sharing. Gregus nods at the three champs. So there's my replacement. Have you held the confirmation yet? We've got our last trial to, one last trial to go, the youngest blurted out and popped up from his chair. Such an honor. I've read all the chronicles, all about your adventures. I heard you I heard you joined the Decemvirate, Gregus, another uttered. Oh, did you? You should cut off your ears then. They deceive you. Am I wearing a mask? You ain't. Good for you. A pathfinder with no eyes is no good. I'm not interested in politics. I'm interested in seeking. So are you going to pour me a beer, and I'll tell you a couple of tales. Gregus Jeffs, so he was a famous Pathfinder. We know about the Pathfinder Society. And how they operate. The Great Debates by Velira Ilio. Publishing House of the Temple of Iomade in Or Origin. Today, many known of the Surim Gammon order and respect its teachings even endorse them. Such was not yet the case on that memorable day when an unheard of forest her hermit came to a temple of Saren Ray and challenged the high priest as to a debate. This was a Valo, whom none had yet called teacher, a traveling wise man who left Jalmare in search of wisdom and found it here in Andoran while meditating in the Arthfell forest. The revelation he received was as brilliant as it was controversial. According to his philosophy, truth lies not only in venerating the gods of the good and order. It's curious that while recognizing Aristo, Abadar, Shailin, Arori, Iamade, and Sarenre, he at the same time rejects the kinder gods of chaos, such as Desna, or Caden, Kalian. Instead, he pursues the so-called wise way, a common principle said to underlie all the teachings of his favorite deities. Avalo has defended this philosophy in debates with many theologians from various temples. Only a few of them were converted on the spot, but gradually a circle of loyal disciples formed around him. By turns, the circle grew into the order he calls Saramgamin, which means the way of the hero, or perhaps the way to making the world a better place. In this book, I recount the story of those early debates, including detailed theological comments on the central points of each side. So this book here, Surya the Wolf, spent five years with the teacher of Alo after he became a teacher, following the wise way, which is bettering the world. All right, so as promised, we'll identify some of these items here. We have a Wand of Vanish. Gives a plus 20 to bonus on stealth checks. Good for sneaking around, one of your piercing scream. Cloak of Winter Veil. Vale. This cloak grants its wearer a plus one resistance bonus on all saving throws and cold resistance 10. Bonuses of the same type usually don't stack, so we'll give her that. She's got this nice new cloak on now. It's like a barbarian skin. Actually, Yeah, let's give the Barbarian skin to Amiri. That's more her style. There we go. That looks like about right. We've got the Stag Helmet. This helmet focuses wearer's attention on the weak points of enemies, giving a plus one insight bonus to attack rolls against flat-footed and flanked targets. Well, I believe sneak attack is best when catching them flat-footed, am I right? Am I right? Character's attack deals any time her target would be done at a dexterity bonus to AC or when the character flanks her target. So, I think the Stag Helmet will go to Assyrius. Try to make him a little more useful. There you go, sir. We've got... Lesser Bracers of Archery. Empower the wearer to use any bow with a plus one competence bonus on attack rolls. That would be for you. 
nothing on. She's got a plus nine to attack. She's good with that bow. Boots of Elven Kind grant the wearer a plus five competence on mobility checks. I believe she's the most mobile person. So she will get the Boots of Elven Kind as well. Oh, Belt of Mighty Constitution grants the wearer a plus two enhancement bonus to Constitution. have to give that to Letharius too. Let's try to make up for my terrible character creation choices I made. Ring of Protection plus one. Perfect for Jayathal. Woodland Aegis. Five armor class. Plus two studded Studded leather allows the wearer to use bark skin spell once per day. Oh, that is perfect for him. Perfect. And it's lighter. You can use bark skin once per day. Who can use the light chain shirt? Pretty much nobody. We've got studded leather plus one, which nobody can use. Padded armor plus one. Well, she can probably use a padded armor plus one. It's only 10 pounds. Give her a little bit of AC. Chain shirt plus one, chain shirt plus one. Hide armor plus two. Probably would sell that. Although that would give her one less AC, but more potential max dexterity bonus if we can increase her dexterity through various ways. Savage Bow. This plus one composite longbow grants its wielder the ability to cast Aspect of the Falcon spell three times per day for one minute each time. When the wielder assumes the Aspect of the Falcon, they gain a plus three competence bonus on perception skill checks, plus one competence bonus on attack rolls with ranged weapon, and the critical multiplier for their bows and crossbows becomes 19 to 20 by times three. This effect does not stack with any other effect that improves the critical range of a weapon. He can't use it. I would never want them in a range situation. Lindsay, she can use it? She can use a savage bow. Well then. Hardy har har. Her attack bonus goes to plus eight though. But she gets a plus one competence bonus on attack rolls. Oh, she's already getting a plus one competence bonus on attack rolls, so... Strangely enough, she's actually better with the Masterwork Light Crossbow. Punching Dagger plus one? I don't know why anybody would use that. It's only two to five, short range. It is a piercing weapon. Times three critical hit on a perfect 20. We've got the Kukri plus one, another oh, 18 to 20 compared to 19 to 20, but he can't use it because it's a martial weapon. Nineteen to twenty by two. What would happen if I put that on her? 3 to 12, she does 4 to 7. She's not getting any kind of bonus to her attack, though. Great Club plus 2. 3 to 12 damage plus 2. 
I mean, 2d4, let's see. Should go to 7 to 16 plus 10, or 6 to 12 plus 9. Give her the great club, I think it's a better idea. Even though those critical hits are times four. This does more base damage. Finally, the Agile Rapier. Two to seven damage, which is piercing. Agile weapons are unusually well balanced and responsive. A wielder with a weapon finesse can choose to apply her dexterity modifier to damage rolls with an agile weapon in place of her strength modifier, whichever is higher. This modifier is damage is not increased for two-handed weapons, but still reduced for offhand weapons. What if I were to give him that? He would do four to nine piercing or five to twelve slashing. But you don't find much piercing damage. Is anybody really doing? Everyone's doing slashing. She's doing some bludgeoning. She's doing some piercing. I wouldn't mind giving that a try. Less damage, but piercing damage, which could be handy. Alright, so I think that's everything we picked up. So in the next episode, we'll head back to Oleg's. Um, rest once we get outside of here. I guess head on to chapter 2 or try to explore more of the world and see what happens. Maybe we can take out those wolves now. Even though we didn't level up and we're not really... Oh, well, we're kind of close. We'll see what happens. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Stay cool, everybody. Peace out. Jay Dumont out.